This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello, my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. All right, Paul, who's ever been in a food fight? I have. Who's ever lost a food fight? I have. <laughs> Today, we're gonna be flinging food around at each other. It's gonna be the vegetables versus the meat. So today we're looking at Food Fighters. It is a two player sort of quick, abstracted sort of strategy game with some interesting decisions to make. It takes about 20 minutes to play. Let me show you, I'll see you on the other side. In Food Fighters, one player is going to be the vegetables and they're gonna have basically the broccoli and the onions and the cabbage. And they're gonna be fighting against the other team, which is the meat. They're gonna have, you know, the bacon and the chicken and the steak and they're gonna be fighting against each other there. Now to win the game, the first player to knock out two of the same type of food is the winner. Now on your turn, you get a few different choices. Uh, what you can do, the first thing you can try to do is attack. Now when you attack, you can only, by normal rules, attack from the front line. So these three guys, if I'm the vegetables. Now this guy can only attack steak, and you can only attack in front of you or diagonally adjacent. So this guy could actually attack this steak or that steak. This guy can only attack the bacon, but there's no bacon in the front row, so right now he cannot attack. The onion can attack the steak, so he could attack this guy. So I'm gonna take this guy and point to him and say, I'm gonna attack him in here. There's two dice. I'm gonna roll these two, and there are two sides of these dice that have a splat. One, sorry, one side on each die. If you roll a splat, then this guy is gone, and he would be gone like that. He would then take somebody from his very last row. So he has three rows of cards, and so he would take somebody from his very last row and decide which one to move up. So maybe he moves up this guy like this, because now this bacon can try to kill this onion. Now, if I did not roll a splat, he would not have been killed, but I get to at least, for a consolation, collect beans, and this is currency in the game. So if I did not splat him, I would have gotten three beans. Now, after I attacked, I can always buy something. So let's just assume that this guy did not get killed. Let's say I just rolled a bunch of beans and we have that there. Now with the three beans, I can spend them in the pantry. Now for three beans, I can spend this and get either a pan or a spoon. Uh, for four beans, I could spend it and get a cracker or a bonus die. Each team has the availability to get up to three crackers per game, two spoons, and a pan. Let's grab a spoon. I'm gonna spend three. Now, usually you cannot buy something if you just used it. So if I just used a spoon and it went back, I couldn't buy it this turn. But I didn't use a spoon, so I'm gonna buy it for three. Now I'm gonna put the spoon in this onion's hand because what the spoon allows me to do is on a future turn, by the way, that would have been the end of my turn and the meat guy would have had his turn. But on my future turn, I can now attack with the spoon. Instead of just hitting this guy or this guy, which I couldn't hit neither because I have bacon, I can now throw the spoon at a bacon. I can throw it diagonally. So if either of these two guys were bacon, I could throw it or all the way straight as far as I want. So I can either hit actually, there's two bacons there. I could have hit either of them, but I'm gonna spin and try to hit this guy right there. So I'm gonna again, roll my tack like usual. I'm gonna do it, ooh, splat, he threw the spoon, it hit the bacon, my spoon goes back out, and this guy would have been gone, and then maybe he moves up his chicken there. And that's pretty much it, that's my attacking, and that's what the spoon does. Now, if I had had a pan, what the pan allows you to do is, well, this guy can't attack anybody here because he's only thinking of bacon and he has no, has no uh, uh, spoon there. He can take the pan and cover up who he's thinking about, now it's wild, now I can attack either two of these. So maybe he attacks this guy and kills him, now this guy's gone and the pan also goes away. Now the last upgrade you can get we talked about was the cracker. Let's say I upgraded this guy with a cracker and let's say that this guy was in the front row like this and like this. And this guy on his turn tried to kill the onion. Now if he hits the onion, he's going to use this cracker as a shield and the cracker is going to be gone. In this case, the cracker actually leaves the game. It doesn't go back to the pantry like the spoon or the frying pan does. Now, if this person hit with two splats at the same time, which is very rare, uh, the cracker would be splat and this guy would be dead. 
Now, the last upgrade you can get is the bonus die. The bonus die is cool because it has two splats on there. So let's say this guy had a cracker and this guy was trying to break through. He had bought the bonus die. He doesn't have to use it that, round, uh, that next round. He can use it whenever he wants. And he rolls this here and he only got one splat, but this gives you a better chance. So with one splat, this just would've been out of the game. With two splats, this guy's dead. Now let's say I don't want to attack, I can roll my dice to try to get beans. In this case, I would just get two beans. If I had rolled a splat, I basically could re-roll this to try to get some beans, and there's three, and then I could buy something from the pantry, and then that would be the end of my turn. Now keep in mind though, when you're attacking, if you try to hit somebody, and you don't get any splats, you still get to collect beans. So sometimes you can get beans when you're not even really wanting to or planning on getting it. The last thing you can do on your turn is essentially swap people. So maybe I want to swap these two guys. I can swap any two guys like this that I want. And then anytime you swap, you also get a bean in your pile. Now let's say this guy was gone and this was empty. You can always swap a person in the same row with an empty. So I could, if I want to move this guy from here to here, I could do that or here to here. Or maybe there was an empty spot here. And again, this is instead of rolling for beans or instead of attacking, the third option you have is to swap and maybe I just go like that and that would essentially be my turn. So you're either attacking, swapping, or rolling for beans. Then you're buying stuff from the pantry. And then if the player that you attacked uh, had someone die, they're gonna move someone from their bottom row up. And this is important because maybe they killed somebody like that, and you bring up a guy who's really gonna take out their second guy. Now there's other cool things you can buy too. The vegetable team could spend five, 10, or seven beans to do different things. This is a return, a crop rotation. Perform a swap of two of your own fighters or two enemies. So basically you could return this to the pantry after use. So you spend five beans, you put this in front of you, you use it when, uh, when you want, and then you could swap two guys that are probably maybe hiding and then put it back here, you could buy it later. Regrow is 10 beans, but you could take back one of your knocked out players. Uh, and put it where you want, but you discard this after the game. Very powerful, it's why it's 10. You get a bean boost. It uh, basically keeps in front of you the whole time. It's seven beans, and then whenever one of your attack hits, you also gain two beans, and those are some cool cards from the vegetable side. Meat side has their special powers that they can buy too. For eight beans, uh, basically the worst, you can play on your turn, smash one enemy cracker, or force an enemy to drop a spoon or a pan, and then this goes back to the pantry, you could buy it again later. Or the meat shield, for 10 beans, it must be discarded, but essentially you put two beans in the fighter's hands, and those are essentially crackers, so two defense. Now this one, it's uh, you gotta put it back to the pantry after, but essentially you get another turn, and that's eight beans, and those are different ways that you can upgrade the meat department if you're on the meat team. That's pretty much how you play, and the first person to knock out two of the same from the other team is the winner. Now I do want to mention that these are not cards, these are thick tiles. They're very strong, they're sturdy, they don't bend, they're very thick and very good components. Now the advanced variant, there's an advanced variant where you can actually draft. So what you would do is uh, player one would draft first and they could draft any one of these power cards. They take the card and then they take any one from that faction. So let's say the first player drafts this card and they have to take one of these. Let's say he goes with broccoli. He takes these and puts them in front of him. The second player would do the same. Maybe the second player now takes this card and takes these guys. Uh, the second player gets to select again. Maybe they select bacon. And they, uh, they select one of these cards and then a vacant. And then the first player gets to choose and maybe he takes one of these cards and you have to take a faction from that same side and so on and so forth. So each of you will have different factions and some of them will be obviously different people from meat and vegetables. Now it might happen that you have both these guys and the chickens and obviously he's not gonna kill his own guy. So it comes with these little, they're not stickers, they're sort of Klingons. So maybe the other team instead of the chicken, the other team has broccoli and he can basically put the broccoli here to make it so that it actually works well. So this is a way that they allow you to draft different guys, but then ways of customizing to make sure that the game works out right. And it's still played the same way and that is <laughs> Food Fighters. Now, Food Fighters has a lot going for it. Number one, the artwork is absolutely adorable. The, you know, the onions and the chicken and the, the bacon, they just look really cool. I like how they're sort of thinking about who they want to attack, and I just think that's a cute thing too. The components are great. Having those as tiles as opposed to just cards, it probably costs them more, but it's definitely better because they, you know, they're sturdy, they sit there, you're flopping around, you're moving them a lot. A good choice than putting those as tiles instead of cards. The beans are cool. I mean, they, they're not just cubes, they're actually beans. Uh, and, and then of course the dice are cool too. So components are good, artwork's amazing. The gameplay itself, uh, this is something I really love about this game. It's super simple. You're either attacking, most of the time you're attacking, 
or you're just gonna swap a guy or you're gonna roll for beans. That's it. And then maybe you'll buy something. Um, and that's pretty much the whole game. You're just trying to knock out two guys, right? But as you play, these layers of depth and strategy and tactics uh, and, and spatial things come out about, and this game has more depth than originally you would think as you sit down and you look at this cutesy wootsy artwork. Uh, and it just, it doesn't look like it's gonna be that deep of a game, but there's actually a good amount of things to think about here. And I love how thematic and cute the sort of the upgrades are. I've got the spoon, now I can throw the spoon. And whether I hit you or not, it's gone. Thematically, it makes sense. Ooh, I'm gonna hold the cracker for a shield. But if you roll two splats, splat goes there, splat goes me, I'm out. Love it. Thematically, everything makes sense. I love figuring out which things I'm gonna upgrade to. The bonus die is huge. Love getting that to try to get the extra splats. Those bonus cards that you're gonna buy. I mean, there's so many things to think about. What do I wanna go for? Where am I at? Um, and I love how there's some sneaky things that can happen where you're like, hey, I'm gonna kill this guy, good. Oh, but now he gets to bring his guy from the back row right up here, and now he's in spot to get the second chicken now and then trouble. And there's some interesting things of sometimes you don't want to kill somebody on his turn because he has his last, his guy that can attack your last guy in the last row on purpose because he swapped him there. There's just, so there's a lot of depth there for as easy as the game is. Now, this isn't a bang out, drag out, epic two hour strategy game, but for a 20 minute game that's cute and easy to teach, there's more depth than you would expect. And I love that about this game. And I love this game so much that I am going to be keeping it in my collection, which doesn't happen very often these days. So to induct it properly in my gaming library, let's, uh, let's play a saxophone serenade for Food Fighters. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter, making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.